you will hear a conversation between a customer and a shop assistant. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good morning, madam. Can I help you? Yes, please. I bought this bread making machine from you quite a while ago, and it doesn't work. I see. That's unusual. These bread makers are usually very reliable. You didn't overfill it, did you, or put too much water in the mix? Those are two reasons for malfunction we often hear of. No, certainly not. I had it working for quite a while, and then it stopped working. It doesn't do anything now. I see. That sounds like a fault in the machine. Yes. I wonder if you can do anything about it for me. Well, that depends. If it is inside the guarantee period, we can help you. Otherwise, it will be more difficult. The assistant says it depends on whether it's inside the guarantee period. So, guarantee period is written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good morning, madam. Can I help you? Yes, please. I bought this bread making machine from you quite a while ago, and it doesn't work. I see. That's unusual. These bread makers are usually very reliable. You didn't overfill it, did you, or put too much water in the mix? Those are two reasons for malfunction we often hear of. No, certainly not. I had it working for quite a while, and then it stopped working. It doesn't do anything now. I see. That sounds like a fault in the machine. Yes. I wonder if you can do anything about it for me. Well, that depends. If it is inside the guarantee period, we can help you. Otherwise, it will be more difficult. Let me see. I have the receipt here. I bought it in. Ah,、uh, it was some time ago. Uh, the receipt says in February last year. February. Well, unfortunately, that means it is outside the warranty period. Oh. In that case, I'll get you a form which you can fill in, and we'll see what we can do. Well, what can you do? Do you think? Well, as I say, if you fill in this form, we can send away the bread maker to be mended. It goes off to a repair centre. Oh, good.、Uh, what happens then? Then we don't get an exact costing, but we will get back an estimate of how much it will cost and how long it will take. I see. And do you think it'll be expensive? Well, it won't be cheap. There will be labour and parts to think about, and also the postage and packing costs. And we don't know how much they will be. Not yet.、Hmm. But when you get the estimate, you've got two options. Obviously, if you agree, you can go ahead. Or if you don't, you can say no. It's too expensive. It's your decision entirely whether you agree. Mm. And if I go ahead, then we arrange the repair. We don't have much stock room, so when it is done, what we'll have to do is arrange a time for you to collect it from us. All right, that's what I'll do. Just give me the receipt. Here you are. Just a minute, madam. I, I thought you said you bought the bread maker in February. That's right.、Uh, here is the date: two twelve o six. I think there's some mistake. In the UK. Two twelve o six is the second of December two thousand and six. Oh, of course! How stupid of me! Of course it is. So it's inside the warranty period. Oh, great! That's right. That's much easier. <laughs> so, what can you do now? Very simple. You fill in this form. We replace the machine and return it to your home address within three days. Oh, well, that's excellent. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Now let me have your details. Certainly. Now this is a Gleeware bread maker three. Model number? Ah,、uh, I have it here. Two one seven. Two one seven. Nine eight zero. Nine eight zero. Three four five. Thank you. Now, where did you buy it? Was it here?、Uh, no, it was in your shop in Blue Water. I see,、uh, Blue Water. Now, date bought two twelve o six. 
Now, can I have your name? Yes, it's Young, J H Young. That's.、Uh, that's spelled Y O N G E. That's Young. I see. And your address? Fifteen, Caper Cayley Gardens, Aberdeen. Uh, I should know this. Can you tell me? <laughs> yes, it's C A P E R, then C A I double L I E. Sorry, could you say that again? <laughs> sure, C A P E R C A I double L I E. And gardens, as in gardens. <laughs> Yes. Good. And the postcode? A D twenty two, four S C. Thank you. And what would be a convenient time of day to deliver the replacement bread maker? Oh,、uh, morning is best, if that's all right. That's fine. So it should be with you on Monday, madam. Oh, good. Thank you very much. Bye. Goodbye, madam. Section two. You will hear part of an introductory talk about a library. Listen and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Good morning. My name is Mandy, and I am going to tell you a little about the John R. Jones Memorial Library here at Blackwater College. We regard the library as a gateway to the resources that you, as students at the college, may need. The majority of you are full-time students. You may find you spend a lot of time here. Even those of you who are part-time students will no doubt require the services too. I hope that by the end of this short talk, you will know the services the library has to offer, including the website and how to get any further help you may need. Oh, sorry. I forgot. There may be a few distance learners on the tour today. I'll explain about the online facilities and borrowing by post scheme a little later on. This is the main site of the library, but we also have the Rivergate Building and the Fieldhouse Library. The Rivergate Building houses the geography resources. That is the book collection and the journal collection, as well as the map collection. The hours and days of opening of the Rivergate collection are the same as this building, except that it is closed on Christmas Day and New Year's Day. The Fieldhouse Library contains a specialist collection of local history, and if you want to visit it, you will need to make an appointment. Those two facilities are the only exceptions to the rule that all the Blackwater College libraries are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. However, to gain access to the facilities, you must have your ID card. No ID card, no entry. We have heard all the stories and excuses, and we don't accept any of them. Just remember your ID card. Now answer questions sixteen to twenty. Now I must apologise for the mess you can see around you today. Libraries should be quiet places, but unfortunately this is not currently the case here. This new building has been here for only two months, and as a result, we have not quite finished moving in. 
So far, we have moved most of the book and journal collections from the old library into this new building. There are two exceptions. We are currently moving the economics collection here, which should be installed by tomorrow, and we will be moving the French literature collection into this building next week. But as you can see, we are still building the new restaurant. Uh, we will finish it, we hope, <laughs> very shortly. We have finished the cafe, however, and students can use it during the library opening hours. We have recently installed 150 computer places, and we will be adding another 100 shortly, so that there will be plenty for everybody very soon. Very shortly, this library will be one of the finest in this part of the country. Don't forget that the library isn't just about academic books. In addition to the books and journals, there is a wide range of national newspapers available from the librarians on request. I'd like to mention the different ways you can get help in using our resources. Don't forget our website at www.mlbc.ac.uk. There are the full catalogues and journal access is available if you have your password and ID number. Now, any questions? Section 3. You will hear two students and their tutor discussing a wildlife presentation. First, you will have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi Katie, hi Ian, come on in. Hi Professor Gordon, we wanted to talk to you about our wildlife presentation next week. Have you decided how to organise it? Yes Professor, at first we were going to focus on the cat family, but then we decided to talk about nocturnal animals instead. Yes, good idea. And how is your planning going? It's going well. We think we have enough material for 20 minutes. The advantage is that there are so many visual aids we can use. We found lots on the internet which we think will be really interesting for people. The problem is that this topic has been hard to narrow down. If anything, we've got too much information for just 20 minutes. How do you think we could narrow it down further? It is a broad subject. There are a few ways you could do it, but I'd recommend just looking at a representative sample of nocturnal animals, just four or five. Yes, and maybe we could choose one animal from each continent, or a land creature, a marine creature and a winged animal. I like the idea of separating it by different types of animals. And if we limit the detail, we'll definitely have enough time. But don't limit the detail too much. Also, think how you're going to interest the audience. Well, we're going to have a picture for each animal so we can talk through the picture. That's a nice idea, but don't limit yourself to pictures. If you can find any clips of the animals, use them. Showing brief video clips can keep an audience interested. I'll look on the internet tonight. And think of questions to ask your audience. People like to be involved. Yes, that's a great idea. Anyway, Professor, we've been practising our presentation and we'd like to show you a small section. Is that OK? Well, we just have a couple of minutes left, but go ahead. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30.
Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Well, we were thinking of presenting each animal with a picture and describing their physical characteristics. OK, but not in too much detail. That's just background information. We'll start with the jaguar. I'll introduce it by saying that the jaguar is a nocturnal animal and the only species of the genus Panthera to be found in the Americas. Like any cat, it has whiskers and it can move quickly. Its spine has great movement, meaning a jaguar can take long strides, sometimes up to five and a half metres. This can make it a deadly predator, as you can imagine. Moving on to the fur, its fur is quite distinct. The markings are like black donut-shaped spots on its otherwise yellow fur. People often confuse them with a leopard for this reason. Now, the tail is interesting. Although people think that the tail has stripes on it, the fur on the tail actually is similar to the body, with black circles around the lower section. The jaguar is generally a creature to be feared. Oh yes, I should have mentioned this earlier. Sorry, like most cats, it has sharp, retractable claws. Yes, that's fine, but be careful. The jaguar is usually thought of as nocturnal, but strictly speaking, it's crepuscular. In other words, most active between dusk and dawn. But as long as you mention this, you can put it under the umbrella of nocturnal. Is that all? Yes, I think so. Thanks, Professor. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear part of a lecture about tea tree oil. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. So, what I'm going to talk about to you today is something called tea tree oil, which was first extracted from Melaleuca altenifolia in Australia. This species remains the most important commercially. Several other species are cultivated for their oil extraction. There is a very long history of tea tree oil's use in aromatherapy. Traditionally, Melaleuca altenifolia leaves were crushed and the oil was inhaled by the Aborigines of Australia for the treatment of coughs, colds and also for the treatment of wounds. For instance, they chewed the young leaves to alleviate headaches and took them to treat sore throats or skin ailments. The Aborigines world was discovered by Willem Jansson, a Dutch explorer who was the first European to sail to Australia. In 1606, he reached the northern coast of Australia in his ship. Then several voyages of exploration followed in the first half of the 17th century. The Dutch found it a paradise on earth for man's well-being, with timber, stone and lime for building. There was also plenty of salt, and the coast was full of fish. Besides, they found the characteristics of the diet there because they happened to meet ten naked black aborigines having a meal in the open air. While the value of tea tree oil originated from Australia, it was gradually known and tested by the outsiders. In the middle of the 18th century, Sir Hugh Palliser, an officer of the British Royal Navy who had been to Australia several times during that period, 
got serious injuries all over due to his experiences in several wars. For more than the last 15 or 16 years of his life, he seldom laid down in a bed because of the constant pain in his leg. Then he tried tea tree oil, as it was said that tea tree oil could operate as a very powerful immunostimulant for pre- and post-surgical care. The use of the name tea tree, also called paper bark trees, probably originated from Captain James Cook's description he made soon after he had arrived at the coast of New South Wales in 1770. At the time, he witnessed some Aborigines of Australia using one of the shrub's leaves to make an infused drink in place of tea. In the 1920s, some human clinical research and the documentation of many benefits associated with tea tree oil were credited, which were made by Dr Arthur Penfold, an Australian government chemist. He investigated the business potential of a number of native extracted oils, then reported that tea tree oil was promising as it exhibited powerful antiseptic properties. But after World War II, the entry of antibiotics declined the use of natural products in medicine, which had a negative effect on the production of tea tree oil. As such an important and valuable material in the world, how is tea tree oil produced? I think most of you are curious about this. Tea tree oil can be extracted in some different ways, but the most traditional way is steam distillation. Once harvested in winter, when the amount of required essence in oil meets the needs for production, the finely cut trees are transported to a steam distillation facility. The extraction is made by distilling the leaves in specially designed stainless steel stills, along with the stems, to yield pure oil. The water-filled boiler is heated and constantly monitored to maintain the correct temperature. Both the steam and oil evaporate and then condense as they run through a pipe into the collecting container where the oil floats to the lid, while the water, because of gravity, goes steadily out the lower exit pipe. At the end of the hour, the oil is siphoned off through the upper pipe, while the condensed steam floats through the lower pipe towards the ground. At the end of each distillation, all the spent plant material is hauled out of the still pot by hand with a short rake, piled onto a trailer and spread where required as a thick woody mulch. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.